how do we actually measure dehydration? You know, you hear different things. Like if you pinch the skin on the top of your hand and it takes more than three seconds to uh, lay down again flat, then you're dehydrated. You hear that. You hear, okay, if you are to uh, press on your fingernail and see a change in the color of the tissue just below your fingernail, which indeed does happen, and it does not go back to its original color within one to three seconds, then you're dehydrated. You hear things like this. If your ankles are swollen when you're wearing socks, you take off the socks and you can see the imprint of the socks on your uh, lower limbs, that means you're dehydrated. You hear this kind of stuff and you should probably be wondering, is any of that true? To some extent, it is true, although it can vary quite a bit by how old you are, whether or not your um, the skin on the top of your hand tends to be looser or not, depending on whether or not you're leaner or not. So in other words, those are not absolutely objective measures of dehydration. Now it is true that if normally you can pinch the skin on the top of your hand and it returns to its normal flattened position within about one to two or three seconds, and it does not do that within five or more seconds, there's a decent probability that you're a little bit dehydrated, that you need to ingest some fluid. Or that if you press down on your nail and you see the depression uh, causes a uh, transition from kind of a pink color to a white color, and then you release, and it doesn't go back to its original pinkish color within a few seconds, well, then there's a chance that you're dehydrated. But again, these are not perfect measures of dehydration. You may be surprised to learn, and I was surprised to learn, that most of the basis for these statements, like even a 2% dehydration state can lead to significant reductions in cognitive or physical performance, are based on not direct measures of hydration, but rather on measures of reductions in water intake, which is a different thing, right? It's saying that ordinarily, a person of a given body weight needs X amount of fluid per day. And when they get even just 2% less than that amount of fluid, then their cognitive and or physical performance is impaired rather than focusing on dehydration of tissues. Okay? Now that might seem like a um, subtle distinction, but it's actually a meaningful distinction when you think about it. However, it's a meaningful distinction that we can leverage toward understanding how much water or fluid we need to drink each day. Now there we can really point to some solid numbers that believe it or not, are fairly independent of body weight. Now I say independent of body weight, I'm referring to the amount of fluid that most healthy adults need at rest. What do I mean by at rest? I mean when not exercising and when not in extremely hot environments. So I'm leaving aside you a desert ultra marathoners or people that are doing any kind of movement or living in environments that are very, very hot. Here I'm mainly referring to people that live most of their daily life in indoor environments. Could be air conditioned or not air conditioned, heated or not heated. What we're trying to arrive at here are some numbers that can work across the board because of course there are an infinite number of different conditions that each and all of you are existing in. So I'm not going to attempt to give you a body weight by activity, by environment, by humidity formula calculation. In fact, no such calculation exists. However, there are formulas that can put you into very stable frameworks. That is levels of water intake for periods of rest when you're not exercising and for when you are exercising that will ensure that you are hydrating with the one exception being if you are exercising or if you are living in very, very hot conditions and you're not heat adapted to those conditions. So what are those numbers? In other words, what is the answer to the question of how much fluid do we need each day? And here I'm referring to fluid. I'm not distinguishing between water, caffeinated beverages, soda, tea, and so on. I'll discuss that in a moment. We can reasonably say that for every hour that you are awake in the first 10 hours of your day, this is important. In the first 10 hours of your day, you should consume on average eight ounces of fluid. Now, for those of you that are using the metric system, not ounces, eight ounces of fluid is approximately 236 milliliters of water. And for those of you that exist in the metric system and aren't used to thinking about ounces and vice versa, just think about a typical can of soda in the United States, it's 12 ounces. In Europe, sometimes the cans of soda are a little bit smaller. Uh, it's a whole discussion unto itself. But eight ounces of fluid, that is 236, let's just say 240 milliliters, because we don't need to be too precise here, of fluid on average every hour 
for the first 10 hours of your day, which translates to an average of 80 ounces of fluid for the first 10 hours of your day, or 2,360 milliliters of water. In other words, approximately two liters of water plus a little bit more for the first 10 hours of your day. Now, I wanna be very clear that this does not mean that you need to ingest eight ounces or 236 milliliters of fluid on the hour, every hour for the first 10 hours of your day. I'm certainly not saying that. And in fact, most people are going to find that they're going to ingest water in boluses. That is, they're gonna have uh, perhaps 16 ounces of water, 500 milliliters of water at one portion of the day, and then maybe a couple hours of later that they'll drink some more water or some more coffee or soda or some other beverage in another portion of the day. I do think, however, it's important for most of us to take a step back and ask ourselves whether or not independent of any other activity or environmental conditions, whether or not we are in fact ingesting 80 ounces or basically 2.4 liters of water for that 10 hours of the day that spans from the time we wake up until 10 hours later. Now, why am I setting this 10 hour framework? The reason I'm setting this 10 hour framework is that it turns out that your fluid requirements, even just at rest, are vastly different in the time from when you wake up until about 10 hours later, as compared to the later evening and nighttime. And here I'm referring to people that are not doing night shifts, but if you are requesting a number of how much fluid to drink, independent of our needs for fluid for exercise, that's going to be eight ounces of fluid or 240 milliliters of fluid on average for every hour from the time we wake up until 10 hours later. That's the simple formulation that should basically ensure that you're getting sufficient baseline hydration for the cells and tissues of your body.